Hello. <laughs> the reason why I'm shaking my head is that I have now filmed this video two times. One time I filmed it um, and I turned the camera because it looked like everything was going to be backwards. So in trying to um, fix that, I turned the camera, which came out in this weird angle and stuff and it looked a little weird and could not hear me at all because I'm recording this on my tablet, which is why you're so close to me right now. Um, and anyway, um, I had recorded it and it, I felt like it was going to be really good and I probably wouldn't have to edit anything, which is good because I can't figure out how to edit anything anyway. Um, I'm doing this on my tablet and because I'm not home, I'm actually on vacation in Vermont. And, uh, but I went to this awesome bookstore today, so I wanted to share my book haul with you guys. Um, but yeah, so I filmed it the first time, you couldn't hear me. So I decided to film it a second time and forgot to hit record. I'm really just, I'm not 100% today. If you can even hear, I can literally, like, I'm holding it because you couldn't hear me down there, and I can't really, I'm not gonna scream at the camera, <laughs> um, and my voice is weird. <sighs> yeah, but I really wanted to share my books because it's fun. I don't know what's, can you hear that? <laughs> what's happening outside? I hope you can still hear me. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to show you my mountain. Which means I have to get up. Uh, I think I'm gonna do the book haul and then I'll show you the mountain. Uh, and why I'm gonna show you a mountain is because I'm literally like I'm looking at a mountain when I look up. It's right there. Big mountain called the Equinox Mountain. Um, it's part of the Green Mountains. Green Mountain Range. Green Mountains Range. I don't know how you say it. Uh, but it's in the Green Mountains because that's what's in the part of Vermont. Um, but yeah, it's gorgeous here. It's so pretty. And it's actually really nice out, which is nice because I like desperate for some spring weather and it's definitely spring here. Um, if anybody else lives in New England, you know that we have been waiting for anything even close to spring for months. Um, winter, specifically May, started in like October and hasn't let go yet. Um, we finally stopped getting snow and all calm things, but even when I left uh, yesterday, it was still really cold. Um, they had some good weather yesterday and today. And we're having it. They're having it here in Vermont too, so that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to film this so that you can hear me and see what I'm showing you. So I think we're just going to have to be really intimate today and get real cozy and hang out, okay? Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, the bookstore that I went to is called Northshire Books. I had actually seen it on something else. I was looking at like uh, quirky stops in Manchester, Vermont or near or on the way to Manchester, Vermont. So there we go. And I actually found um, the King Arthur store, King Arthur Flower uh, store and bakery. And it's the flagship store and it's in um, Norwich, Vermont actually, which is right on the way. It's only like an hour from here. Um, and it was awesome. <laughs> um, if you've uh, watched my channel before, uh, then you know that I'm a baker. I love, 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 love to bake. I'm actually opening an Etsy store that's opening when I get home from vacation. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, and the baker who loves to bake is actually really good at it. So it's fun. So I went to King Arthur Flower and I just, I filled a whole bag. I bought a whole bunch of stuff. Um, if, you're, if you're following me on Instagram and you've seen a picture of that haul, uh, if you're interested in actually seeing uh, a video of it, I can do that. Uh, just let me know down below. Um, and I'll record one of those. Uh, but this one is for the book center. I got a couple of other things too in the bookstore. I'll show you those too because it's super fun. But I was really excited. So I went to this fun store and it was right on the corner. It was actually really easy to find. And I'm starting to think I just shouldn't even do that. I keep hitting buttons by accident. <laughs> Uh, it happens when you use like so many different things that they for the video. Um, let me try to hold it up screen. Um, anyway, I went to this store and uh, it was on that list of like quirky things to go to in this area of Vermont. And I love a bookstore or a gift store, and this was great. And um, so I went there, and it was actually this cute little building. Um, it was really easy to find. And there was cool Thomas Jefferson thing outside. Um, it was just really neat. And then uh, I got in there and. I actually filled a basket until it was too heavy to hold. Um, uh, really nice of you. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome too. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Let's uh, show you what I got. I'm gonna try to do it holding it like this because I feel like no one actually 
be able to hear me. Um, I hope, because I really don't want to record this again. If it doesn't work this time, we're just going to take it as a sign off and not to show you these books right now. So. Let us see here. I'm getting this stuff off the book. So, what I got. First thing. Okay, we'll have to cover my face too, obviously, but it should be interesting. So this is actually um, a gift for my mom. Uh, she has this little index card that has all of her usernames and passwords on it. And... It's really beat up and old and it's hard to read and being the person that helps her pay her bills by doing all the online related stuff it's like something more legible to read so i saw this and i thought of her i actually really like uh, the company that makes this is peter popper press and they make these awesome little notebooks and address books and stuff all the time and i really like the quality of them so this is uh the personal internet address and password logbook so i take this and it actually has it's spiral bound and it has like you should put like a name and internet address and your username and password and any notes you have so like your security questions or something and then you hope nobody else finds it and gets them to borrow your stuff so there's that um that's actually for mom for mother's day because she needs something she just does so there's that um then i got some awesome books uh the chocolate journal i mentioned i think um let me find it eventually so let's see be so much easier if I put this down, but I'm really afraid you're gonna be able to hear anything. Um, I'm just gonna make faces. This is what I usually do when I record videos, but I edit all that out. But I cannot figure out how to edit on this tablet, <laughs> so I'm gonna try not to do too much crazy stuff um, and just get the thing I guess playing this up though. So we are going to have to adjust a little here. Already done this twice. Okay. So this is actually like the third time around. That can't be good. So, first book. Let's just get into the book before I knock you over. But the first book is A Transatlantic Tunnel Hurrah. So, this one, what it looks like. Ooh, hi, baby. Um, it's by Harry Harrison. Uh, this one's about like a guy whose task is like somewhere around the 1970s, kind of in Earth, and he's building a tunnel that's 4,000 miles in length. So it can sustain a pressure of 1,000 atmospheres while accommodating a cargo and passenger traveling in excess of 1,000 miles per hour. Yeah, so that alone, um, I saw the title and laughed out loud and was like, what is this? And then I read the back of it and it just sounds so fun. Um, basically, if this guy doesn't succeed in making this tunnel, he's like a traitor to his king who actually was hanged already and he's just a laughing stock. But if he does it, then he's like the most brilliant man ever. Um, it's only like a 250 page book. It looks really interesting. It was on their little Best Buys thing. It was sitting on a shelf in front of me. It was seven dollars and it came on with it. Um, so there's that one. And then, let's see, this one was actually one too that was a random, like, it was on a recommendation shop. I love, I love when you go to like regular old school bookstores and they have like a regular local bookstore, a real like my mom owns it kind of thing, like, it's in the family, that kind of place. Um, when you go to those kind of bookstores and they have recommendations everywhere, like, this place had, like, little note cards that said, like, if you like this, then we recommend this, or I recommend this because it's awesome, or this staff member thinks this one's great, and they have them, like, all the way, like, in the children's section, in the thing, which is pretty cool, actually had, like, all these cute little nooks and crannies, and, um, the only section I didn't actually get to really look at was the graphic novel section, because there was a guy that was pretty much cleaning out everything Batman. Or Superman, I don't want them um, because he and I, I know the difference between them, but the way that we were standing, uh, he was like right in front of it, so he was on the like DC area though. But I think it was Batman that he was getting, uh, but there were a bunch of new releases that I found in that he just was cleaning out. He had so many of them, so um, I'm very sure I was like, Does he work here? because <laughs> he was buying a lot if he didn't, but it works. So, uh, but they were talking about Superman, so I'm not sure. He was standing in front of Batman though. Well, that's why I'm like, I'm not really certain what he's getting, but that's the only section of the store I didn't actually get to kind of visit. Um, otherwise, I really like ran through everything. The children's section is the cutest thing I've ever seen. They have an entire section, um, it's upstairs. They have children, they have like middle grade, and then they have like your picture books and that kind of stuff. And then they actually have a part of it that's like the children's area. You go back there, and there's like all these big like elephants and giraffes. And all this fun stuff, play with, and it's just really sweet and adorable. And the staircase was 
gorgeous and had I not had a huge basket of books I would have stopped taking the picture because they were like wrought iron and just absolutely gorgeous don't fall down on me probably kill yourself but so anyway so uh, when I was walking around uh, the mystery section which I can't remember the last time I read like a fur series mystery book um unless you count uh the Suki Stackhouse series which is the series that it, um uh, True Blood is based off um that series uh, it's considered a mystery romance, um, mystery romance fantasy um, series, but well, it's not really written like a mystery novel, though, from what I remember. But I, I really, I haven't read like a full-on mystery novel in a really long time. I think I read one Sherlock Holmes once, um, and I know I read a Mary Higgins Clark once, or Sweet Bathroom once, maybe both, because um, <laughs> um, my aunt likes those, but uh, other than that, I haven't really read anything and I saw this one actually not true I found this one um, I saw one on the thing and I was looking at it and of course it was the third in the series so I was like well I want the first one and it turns out that this is actually um so this is called it's the Grant Chester mystery my um city changes and the shadow of death and it's by James Runcie and apparently James Runcie writes a bunch of stuff for BBC um, and this has actually been turned into a BBC series of Grant Chester mysteries which the book that showed the um, the cover was actually the person in it who's quite handsome, um, but that's BBC for you. Uh, so I might have to look into that. Um, if anybody's seen the show or read these, uh, it should let me know because I'm kind of interested. I've never heard of them before, and uh, I really I was really affected by the the cover art anyway. Um, it's really nice. It's very pretty. Um, it's a very really nice illustration. I like it a lot, and I really like the fact that on the spine. Can you see that? What that is? That's a number. One. It tells me what it is. I, that's how I found it. I looked and said, ooh, this has a lot on it. It looks really fun, and I was really close to buying all the ones they had because it looked like it would be a lot of fun, but I'm trying to, though I'm trying to, and if you've been watching my videos, you know this, like, my, my thing for this year is to really read the series I have and to buy out what I need for series. Um, so, starting series seems kind of crazy, but my thing is this. I've always really enjoyed series anyway. I like getting into a character's head even further than just one book sometimes um sometimes i don't make it that far uh but because it, like this is a new one i've never heard of and i haven't read a mystery in so long i'd rather just read one book and see if i like it and then get the next book rather than buy them all at once because i've done the whole like buy the whole series at once and sometimes it works and sometimes i force myself to read them but don't really like them or just end up getting giving it all away or giving them all so anyway so i am trying to buy my series though if i actually look for some of the ones I need, which I, um, if you watch my other book house and stuff, you'll see that um, I've been uh, reading, uh, I read Wicked, so I'd like to read the rest of that series. And I have Son of a Witch, but I don't have the other two, so I actually looked for those, but they only had the fourth one, and I would like to have them in order, to be completely honest. And the fourth one was the same price it would be a home, so yeah. Anyway, so I got this one. Uh, this is a mystery about um, Sidney Chambers, uh, the vicar of Grantchester, so that's the area he's from. Um, he's 32, he's a bachelor. Apparently tall talk and handsome and um he's unconventional and <laughs> he can go where the police can't go so basically he works as a consultant it actually kind of made me think of elementary the tv show um how like sherlock isn't really a detective he's just super smart and weird and um they kind of use him because he can go other places because he's not up so it kind of made me think of that uh it just sounds really interesting and apparently there's like six different mysteries in here so that sounded kind of fun and i'm really excited to get into it it looks pretty cool um next one um we had on here somewhere let's see if i can move these actually are we liking this style of like super close and personal is this do we like this i like that my tablet seems to take really nice i mean like this is the quality video that we felt happy um, i was trying to get to this one so I, right before my vacation, I started reading Cinder, finally, by Marissa Meyer, um, which is the first book in the Luna Chronicles. And I already have Scarlet, but I did not have Cress, and I did not have Ferris, so I picked those up today. Um, and these two are just, I think Cress, if I remember right, is the one that's a retelling of Rapunzel? Yeah, lots of hair. And uh, Ferris is actually the story about the queen that's in the thing, uh, well, like your evil queen character, um, Levana, and it's about her. I feel like I'm dropping the camera. Sorry. Um, so yeah, so I uh, started reading Cinder. I really like it, and I have Scarlet at home. 
So uh, I wanted to get the rest of them if they had them, and they did. And they were uh, four really expensive ones. Either these are those three. Should I pick those up? Um, these ones are super fun. I was in the kids section, and because I like I I've mentioned before that I have a book club for my niece. She's thirteen. Um, and I read just about anything. Like, I'll read, I'll read a picture book, I'll read a thing. I actually stopped and there was this really cute picture book. It was Snow White and the 77 Dwarves. That sounded really funny. Um, but it was, uh, it was really a really young picture book. Meaning that, like, it had, like, four words to a page. And I wasn't fascinated with the art or anything, so I didn't pick that up. But I did check it out because it sounded kind of funny. Um, but yeah. I was in the kids section, though, and they had, like, your series and stuff. And they have these, um, you know, they call them like best buys when they're like uh, less expensive or something. I guess just buy. Um, and these, they look so funny. So it's two books. I don't know if there's any more in the series than this, but I have a feeling that I'm going to love them. And my niece might be interested too. Uh, it's called Horton's Miraculous Mechanisms, Magic Mystery and a Very Strange Adventure by Lisa Evans. And then the second one is Horton's Incredible Illusions, Magic Mystery and Another Very Strange Adventure by Lisa Evans. So this is still like this is the first one. And this is the second one. And um they just they look like pretty quick reads. Um they're definitely like a middle grade, I would say, based on just the setup of it and uh the way it's written it looks like. Um but it's about a ten year old who his name's Stuart and he comes upon a note um, that's daring him to find his great uncle's uh, like inventions and stuff and magic and whatever and it just sounds kind of fun like I read the little blurb and was like I want to read that and then I looked I'm like wait is this the second one I'm gonna get both um, and I figured that'd be really awesome for my niece's book club too because she reads a lot of um, I try to break it up so she reads fantasy and stuff like she likes so right now she's reading the Maze Runner um, she really wants to get into Twilight, and she read like the Enclave, or whatever that, the Razor, Razor Blade, Razor Tongue, Razor something series by Anne Aguilar. Um, please comment down below what it's called, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she's uh, read those two, and she really liked them, so she likes fantasy stuff, but she also is uh, um, still a kid, and she likes funny things and stuff too, so I try to like separate, I'll give her like some weird, like I give her an RL sign book, or um, like the Twilight books or something like that. And then I'll trade to like something that's kind of fun and like a fun adventure, but maybe written more for like a younger age just to give her a break. Cause I mean, I do that. I mean, everybody does. Sometimes you want something just a little easier to read. So yeah, uh, I think we're really bad right now. <laughs> Sorry. And again, this video is weird. I apologize for the weirdness, but I think I'm fine. Um, put you here. Hmm. My bright green bag. Huh? Hmm. I love it. It's so nice in here. I love it. Um, okay, what's next? <laughs> Try not to drop you. It keeps like almost falling. Um, I should have brought these over. Alright. So the next book, um, actually, I, if you've been watching booktube, you've seen this book. Because I think every channel, I, I watch a lot of booktube channels too. And I think everyone um, that I watch has read this and said it was great. So I want to check it out. Um, it's The Diviners by Little Bray. And it's big. Oh, it's such a pretty cover, isn't it? Um, this is like way too close. Um, I don't know how to get it in there. There we go. You kind of see it. <laughs> this is hilarious. I'm literally, I'm not even going to attempt to edit it. You're just going to get it like this. And I think it'll be funny. You go ahead. You, you comment away because this is going to be silly. Um, and like it if you like it because, you know, maybe we'll do more. I'm gonna conversation to do. I don't know. My voice is like able to go really deep right now for me because I have a cold. Can you tell? I'm trying to like not sneeze on you right now. Um. Anyway, so this book, I'm trying to remember what it's about. Uh, let me see. D -d 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 -d. Um. I don't even know what it's about. Something dark and evil has awakened. That's what it says. I can't even remember. I remember um, seeing a book a couple times, like people talking about it and it looking like a really cool book. And then it sounded really interesting. And reading the synopsis and liking it, um, this tells you nothing. And I kind of feel like maybe that's how I want to go into it. So I'm going to leave it like that. It's a bigger book than I expected, but it looks really cool. And it's on like a, it was a used copy, which it doesn't look used at all, but it was on a used copy. So it was like half the price it normally is. Um, usually it's like 20 bucks whenever I see it at home. And I got a break, so. 
and clean it slide all over there because I didn't hurt it. Luckily, I only have like four books left to show you, I think. Um, so, and then I have a couple of books to check everything. Um, so that's my bot. I'm guessing everybody knows. Uh, this is Mafia. Or Mafia. And it's by Suzanne Collins. And that is the third and final book in the Hunger Games. Um, I have the other two. I have not read them. Um, I've seen the movies and I love the movies, but I wanted to read the books. Uh, but I haven't read them yet. But I have uh, Catching Fire and I have Hunger Games. Um, I got those a while on Bookmage actually, but Mockingjay never comes up on Bookmage for some reason, so I don't know if people are just reading it and keeping it. Uh, I don't, it seems weird to me that you wouldn't keep the first two, but you would keep the last one. Don't know. Um, but I really, I never see it used, and this was used, so I have that one. Um, my only reason for getting stuff used and stuff too is just. Um, I'm not, uh, if you even watch this at all, you see that I usually, I'm not a rereader. I don't keep a lot of books because I don't reread a lot of books. Um, I read tons and I love to read, but I tend to not um, reread. Uh, here and there I'll keep books because I really want to read it again. Um, usually they're part of a series or like I just got that giant uh, Edgar Allan Poe book that I love. Uh, I think I posted that video. Did I post that video? <laughs> I did, right? Um, <laughs> Okay, but I don't yes, I did. I did because I got a comment on it. Um, thank you for your comments and your likes. By the way, oh, and also thank you to my subscribers because I noticed the other day that I have more. And hi, hello, hi, new people subscribing. Um, it's a pleasure to see you. I hope you're enjoying this really weird video. Um, I really feel like I'm on like sick brain too, so I'm kind of like starting to lose it here. <laughs> uh, after I'm done with this video, I'm literally gonna take the rest of my really awesome raspberry iced tea, which go figure that I'm in Vermont, and I bought an iced tea because I wanted something under a water to drink. I've had a lot of water, which is good. I'm sick, so it's good anyway. It's good for you. But um, I had water, and the water was yummy. Um, it was lovely and everything, but I wanted something with some flavor in it, and uh, I really like tea anyway. And I got this iced tea, and I looked at it and was like, I, I pay a lot of attention to um, the amount of sugar and stuff I drink, um, but I haven't had anything other than unsweetened teas and water <laughs> for the last like three or four days. So I grabbed a raspberry iced tea, which um, typically when you buy a flavored iced tea, it's going to have like triple the sugar of anything else, but I was in the mood for something a little sweeter. <laughs> I took one sip and I actually sent a text to my friend who lives in South Carolina and was like, go figure that I'd buy a tea in Vermont and it would taste like the tea that you get when you're in South Carolina. <laughs> so the person that makes that must be because um, it's like a, a privately owned company or whatever. It must be from the South. Like, there's no way. Uh, it tastes just like sweet tea. It's really good, though. Um, anyway, back to back to the Holly Hall. Oh. Weird little people. Do you hear them? They're kiddos. Um, I think they're staying a couple doors down. Uh, I found them they're playing the other day. It was really cute. Because I'm staying in a room that has its own little patio, which is why you see all this ceiling. Because it's somewhere in here. It's got two big windows and then um, its own little patio, uh, which is really nice, and I love it. Um, I'm gonna go out there and read after I'm done with this, because obviously I have some reading material, and I brought it with me. So this tablet has like seven or eight or nine or fifteen, I don't even know how many. It has tons of books, and it's really funny because every time I do a book haul, I forget my tablet, because I get new books all the time on here. Um, because uh, I don't know if you've heard of BookBub. Oh, that's a cool thing to mention. Uh, BookBub is a website that you can go to. Um, you just put in the kind of books you like, and it sends you book deals, and they're like under three dollars, so like two ninety nine, dollar ninety nine, or free books. So I keep getting free books <laughs> because I'm like, oh, that sounds good for free. I'll take it. So I have tons on my tablet, but I never talk about those. Um, if you want to see the video about that, let me know. Maybe I'll go through my tablet and tell you what's on here. Um, I don't even know what's on here to be honest, except for that I know Lamez is on here. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so I brought with me Cinder because I want to finish Cinder. And I actually brought um, Would You Go Burn a Debt because I bought that book a couple months ago and I really want to read it. It looks so fun. So I brought that with me. And then I have my tablet because it has some on there. And then I bought all these books and now I want to read these two. I'm only here for like another day, so <laughs> I like to think that I'm reading more than a couple of books. Who knows? But I really just feel like devouring books right now because I feel like ass, to be completely honest. Um, so three more to show you. Three more to show you. This is 20 minutes right now. And again, I don't know how to edit it. I don't know how long the first part of this was. I just don't know. Yeah. This might be a long video. I'm sorry. Um, 
really cool. This is the Write Stuff Journal. Now, I'm a huge journal person. I'm also a writer. Uh, I am a writer who's struggling to write more right now. Uh, I love writing, and I spend 15 years of my life writing every day. And now, I like, I feel like I never put up the pen to write, and it's bumming me out, because I have a really good idea for a book uh, that I've been working on for like 10 years, and it's not a book yet. And I really wanted to do it this year, and I'm just not hitting that goal yet. So to get myself to write more, um, I thought maybe if I got like a new set of prompts, I have like seven or eight books that are prompt books, uh, meaning like, tell you there's a bear in the woods, what happened? <laughs> Can you, you write about it? This is a pretty journal though that has like a, a writing prompt nice area. Uh, if you can even see that. So it has like the writing prompt of when I get to read to write it. So I'm almost thinking if I do like a couple of these a day, will that work? Um, it looked really nice and I didn't like journals anyway. And it was such a pretty style and I, you know, vacation. I bought some stuff. Okay, so next two books I bought are actually considered like horror books and thrillers and stuff. And that made me really happy. I haven't read, I don't think I've read a horror book in forever. And I used to really, really, really like them. I mean, used to be meaning like when I was 11 and 12. Um, I read a lot of like your Fear Street and I used to love Fear Street. Anybody else like a Fear Street fan? Dude, I was dying had it down. All this stuff was awesome. It was so ridiculous and so funny. My favorite personally, Sunburn, anybody? Yeah. And oh, there's this book, I can't read the author either, uh, but it's called Let Me Tell You How I Died. If you're looking for some weird book that like brings you back to that realm when people used to write awesome books like that, read that one because Let Me Tell You How I Died is pretty awesome. Um, it's about this diary that somebody finds and it's like it starts with let me tell you how i died and then literally tells about them exactly how they died and it's just weird because it's like a ghost writing it and it's a really cool book um anyway so uh like i said when i was running around in this book i kept going to every section and i ended up kind of picking up a book in each section so uh this one is a novel that's horror it says it's horror and it's called the necromancer's house um it's by christopher bulman bulman Bowman. Um, and it says that uh, this uh, this guy, I guess, is a recovering alcoholic and he lives in this place with this massive library and he's really well off. He's got like a Mustang and whatever. And his whole house is like made of booby traps and stuff because at some point he stole some stuff from the Soviet Union. Uh, a treasury of Russian magic, it says, from the Soviet Union like 30 years ago. And then, so it's been 30 years and he hasn't had to worry about it because it seems like everything's been fine. And then all of a sudden, this um, monster skirts and pages of Russian folklore is coming after him. And frost and death are coming, that's where it says. Tell me that doesn't sound awesome. That sounds so good to me. So I picked that up, and then, this is so pretty. Pretty look, pretty look. Seriously, isn't that beautiful? And that's like involved in it. It's so pretty. Um, this is called Poison, a Wicked Snow White Tale by Sarah Pinbrill. This is a really, really short read. I mean, that's a tiny book. Um, let me just read the back. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, a handsome prince rescues a beautiful princess from the me machinations? machinations? I don't know what that is. <laughs> her wicked stepmother sweeps her onto his white horse and rides off into the sunset. But in Sarah Pinbrough's wickedly telling and classic tale, nothing is quite as you remember it. Now, again, this was over, like, in the, um, like, sci-fi fantasy, and then it was, like, um, horror and suspense stuff. So it was over in like that suspense section. <laughs> and I was like, Whoa! I love fairy tale retellings. I've told you this a hundred times. I will always read them. I absolutely love fairy tale retellings. So that sounded really cool to me. Um, and the fact that it's such a short read and it's such a gorgeous copy, uh, it was just, it got thrown in the basket of all that was anything else. I was like, yeah, I'm going to read that. Um, it's actually what I'm going to pick up, like, now. I kind of want to check it out. I want to read everything, though. I really do. Everything I bought, I'm, like, really excited to get into. Um, so, yeah. So, I love when that happens. There we go. I'm trying to figure out another way to hold this and it's not happening. Um, so, yeah. Um, the only other stuff I got were a couple little trinkets. Um, I'll go through those real quick since this has already become a longer video than intended. Um, and thank you for sticking around. And, uh, yeah, if you like this video, like it. Um, subscribe below also if you want to see more. Let me know if you like this kind of video. <laughs> it seems really weird to be so close the whole time. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, you can work with what you got, right, when you're on vacation. Uh, I really just wanted to do a book haul because I was really excited about all the books I found. And I'm pretty sure when I get home, I'm going to forget to do this. So, <laughs> so yeah. 
Um, so the next things I got, uh, just again, just a couple of knickknacks and stuff. Um, these are actually postcards because there's a thing in my creative companion I have, which is uh, one page a day. I can't remember the author right now. The hashtag's JK one page though, if you want to check it out, it's JK, I think the numeral one, then PG. Um, if you can check it on like Instagram, you can see what it is. Uh, it's just, it's literally one page a day, you fill out one thing, it's a creative prompt. Um, sometimes it has you draw pictures, sometimes you write lists, sometimes it's just whatever your interpretation is. Um, and it's really cool. And one of the challenges in it was actually to send postcards to your three furthest away friends. So I've been looking for postcards when I'm out. Um, I found one the other day, and uh, I think I showed it in a good haul too. And yeah, I found some today. So this one, let's see, yeah. Uh, this is Robert Todd Lincoln's in Killeen in Manchester, Vermont. Um, it, that's actually where, because this area, uh, Lincoln's wife used to come here, specifically the hotel I'm staying at, I guess, there's a building where his wife used to be. Um, and then Robert Todd Lincoln uh, had a house in Hillview that he stayed in too, so. So yeah, that's the, there's that one, and that's in the spring, it was really pretty. Um, this was actually the hotel I'm staying in, so this is a giant hotel I'm staying in. How big, doesn't it look like it's from like the 1920s or something? It makes me think of the Great Gatsby. And literally, uh, last night I actually went down and ate dinner. Well, you know, like very early, very early dinner, but for me, I had eaten really early in the morning, so <laughs> I was like, I really, I was, I was an early bird. Um, <laughs> I was like, you're a diva, something like myself. Um, but the, the restaurant that I was in was like so fancy, and it was totally, it just made me think of 1920s. Um, but yeah, so that's. That's all I'm staying on on that one. Uh, this one I already know who it's going to, and yeah. Um, it says they set off together with a blank sense of wrongdoing. How fun is that? It's so cute. And then this one is actually just another on my wall. Um, sometimes I buy postcards because they're less expensive than buying like framed art. Yeah, good tip. <laughs> uh, or like uh, photographs and stuff you can usually find because it's really good photography, quality photography and uh, art prints in postcards, I think. So um, sometimes I'll buy that, or a magnet or something, instead of buying another one. Um, another thing, if I haven't like taken a picture myself or whatever, just because uh, it's kind of cool to have like a little artistic thing. I really like, I like stuff like that anyway. I like art, and I love photography, and I take a lot of pictures anyway, hence why I love Instagram so much. But uh, but yeah, um, this one, I love black bears. They're my favorite, and this has some pretty little black bears and a really pretty sunset on it, and it says Vermont, and I like it, so that's gonna- I've actually done this when I just said that. Um, that's gonna go on my wall at home, because I like that a lot. Um, I also got myself, because I haven't bought any maple syrup yet. Um, so I'm from Maine, and we have our own maple syrup, but Vermont maple syrup and New England maple syrup do not taste the same. Um, Vermont maple syrup is actually a lot sweeter, I think, personally. Uh, it's really good though, but I've had it before, but not in Vermont, so... Um, I just have it. Maybe tomorrow I'll get breakfast and have some French toast or something. That's, that's actually a good idea. I think we're good that. Um, this smells so weird. I wish I could be in there. Um, so this is the candle. Um, it's called Sap Bucket. It actually looks like, uh, if you know nothing about, <laughs> if you know nothing about, uh, maple syrup, this is the kind of bucket you get. Um, you, you tap the tree, and then this is where the sap goes, and that's how you make the syrup. Um, and it literally, it's like a, if you take this, and this is like a, a scale model of what the bucket is. Um, the candle itself is actually maple scented, and it's a soy candle. I love soy candles. I don't know if you guys have gotten into soy candles, but they burn so much easier and so much cleaner, and then they smell so good always. Like, you can literally just open it up and leave it open, and it smells perfect, and it doesn't get all gross like, uh, regular wax candles do sometimes. Well, sometimes they get all separated and stuff, so sometimes they do that. Um, I don't seem to. And it actually has a, it has a fur wick, which I love. I love the wooden wicks, because they Oh, they're so fun. So I'm excited. It smells so good. Um, I'm excited to light like that though when I get home. I love candles. Um, I also got, um, I went to Mall of America a couple of years ago with a friend of mine and we bought these little voodoo um, keychains and uh, we actually both bought these cute little butterflies and I saw this and I thought of her because she loves the, the little the little keychains like that. And this one's actually Batman. Um, her favorite is Batman so if she's watching this she's gonna know it's for her but I don't know if I'm gonna give it to her next time I see her or save it for her birthday or something, but it's just he's so cute. So that's for her. And then I actually got this awesome, it's a brass horse, okay, and it's painted, hand painted. Look how pretty it is. Isn't it beautiful? I love the detail on his um 
thing here. Uh, but yeah, this, uh, this I got for, uh, my uncle, actually, for Father's Day. He collects horse things. Um, my aunt, coincidentally, also really likes caramel horses, and it kind of reminds me of Bolt. I think they're both really like that. Um, but I got that, um, to get him for Father's Day, because that's coming up in a couple months, and I tend to, if I see something I like for something, and then I just pick it up. That's how I work. This video has become really long, and I apologize. Um, I do like a grocery order one. I had a lot of books to show you. And then, uh, I was telling myself I can't get this open. <laughs> um, so the last thing I got, I'm sorry, I'm struggling. Okay, um, the last thing that I got is a pair of earrings. Now I, as you can see, have very short hair. La la la. I love my hair. It's fantastic. Because I have very short hair, I can get away with wearing either really large earrings, like these, or really little earrings, like these pretty things I brought because you can only see them, which is pretty awesome. They're never hiding my hair. Um, of course, just fell over. Uh, these, and I hate them to stop moving. Um, let's see if I can get a closer one. Can you see how pretty those are? They actually have like, um, it's like a little tin, uh, like a little tin dish it looks like, and then the, the beads are actually like right in there, these pretty little stones. They're so pretty. Um, I love stuff like that, and I love to get myself, like, I shop really random places for jewelry, because I like really unique, jewelry, um, go figure, girl with blue hair, like, you need jewelry, um, <laughs> I like really classic stuff, too. like, I, I have pearls and stuff like that, and diamonds and whatever, I have all that stuff, but, you know, like, a hoop earring and whatever, I love stuff like this, but, like, little fake polka dotted feathers, I mean, come on, but I really do, I like really unique jewelry, so I buy them at, like, I buy a lot of earrings and stuff at, um, like, card shops and gift stores and souvenir shops, things like that, um, because I like them, I actually, Parent earrings I get compliments for all the time. They're about for three dollars in the base bid of a place in New York, like some weird alleyway place in New York. Um, it's really fun. So yeah, that's what I got at North Strider Books today. Um, really awesome. The store is great if you're ever in Vermont, specifically in the Manchester area. I would definitely suggest checking out. It's a really awesome store. It's really fun. Um, and yeah, if you are noticing the weird connection here, I was in Manchester by the sea in Massachusetts last week. So I'm going for Manchester now. I guess Manchester works for you though, because I really like that town. I'm really liking this one. Except I have noticed that being the only person with tattoos and blue hair is a little weird. Um, I'm used to, at home, like a lot of people have tattoos and piercings and, and crazy colored hair, and here it does not seem to be the case. Um, so that's a little weird. I feel like I'm sticking on like a sore thumb everywhere, but whatever. <laughs> Work. Um, I've had a couple of people compliment me though, so that's fun. Um, but yeah, uh, Manchester by the, by the sea. Um, and then uh, Massachusetts was really nice. Here's really nice. And I love Manchester, New Hampshire. I've been there a million times. I used to live right outside there, and uh, I always really like that too. So yeah, so that's all I have to talk about today. Uh, I'm sorry it got a little long because it got a little awkward too. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out today. Um, if you liked the video, hit like. If you want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe. Hello to my current subscribers. Thank you for being here. And um, it's great to see you again. And uh, let me know too. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I went to a King Arthur Flower. And I had a player haul there, so if you're at all interested in seeing a video about that, um, let me know below and I'll record one of those. Um, yeah, so have an awesome day and happy reading. And um, we'll see how many of these I uh, bust out before I uh, end my vacation here. <laughs>